Hey, what's going on my dudes? So today I'm bringing you my Turian Havoc Trooper build. It's going to go along with my Turian Havoc Trooper gameplay I just put up yesterday. First, my favorite soldier variant. Um, other options are like the Human Soldier, um, Turian Soldier, the Krogan Mercenary. Personally, I find this to be the strongest soldier. It's the one that I prefer the most. I build it more as a glass cannon and I lean it more towards turbocharge and incinerate. You can actually change the incinerate for a flat cannon. Um, the reason you would do that is flat cannon overall is a better option for taking down large groups of enemies than incinerate, but incinerate still does a decent job at it and it has a better damage over time and overall better DPS than flat cannon. And that's what I'm going for here, longer DPS, or better DPS, sorry. So for incinerate, rank four, it's a pretty easy option. You're either going to go Utility with Radius or you're going to go better DPS with Burning. Again, the DPS benefit greatly outweighs Utility. Rank 5 is interchangeable. Depends on who you are finding yourself using Incinerate on more. Say, for example, you are fighting the Outlaw faction and you find yourself using Incinerate on Berserkers and Hydras way more often than Sharpshooters and just the regular uh, foot soldier. You might want to go anti-armor if you find uh, yourself using it the other way around on sharpshooters and the like with red health enemies. You might want to go initial damage. Again, it depends which one you want. For rank 6, either detonator so you can detonate combos or you can send out two uh, projectiles. So I would only choose detonator if I'm always running with like a four-man team or I'm always running with like and a sorry adept to always be able to prime this combo. Otherwise, the DPS and the overall group damage you're going to gain from being able to take or to inflict two enemies with this damage over time definitely outweighs it. So for turbo charge, either recharge speed or duration. It's a horse apiece. I've seen arguments for both. Personally, I find myself killing one to two enemies, maybe three enemies, and then end up doing nothing. I still have turbocharge up for another 2 or 3 seconds, but I'm not shooting, I'm not getting much use out of it. So I'd rather have less time and have it come back up immediately, that way I'm ready for the next fight. Again, it's a horse apiece though, because say if you get duration, you have more uptime on Hydras and Berserkers to kill them off completely before your turbocharge is gone. So again, it's a horse apiece, they both work. For rank 5, gun damage and gun force versus gun accuracy and stability. Overall, it's the same thing, but I'm going to rely on my own accuracy, being able to aim correctly and knowing when and when not to burst fire to increase my accuracy and stability. Versus my gun damage and gun force, there's not very many ways besides attachments and using boosters to increase that, so I'm going to go for that one. For rank 6, uh, you can either do increase your clip size and rate of fire barrier rate of fire, sorry, both by 20%, or you can just increase your clip size by a shit ton. The DPS gain, because of the rate of fire increase, along with the clip size increase, greatly, greatly outweighs dump heat. Supercharge, in my opinion, is the way to go. No contest. For flat cannon, I'm only specking 4 into it, into, or, or specking into rank 4 of it, should say, and I'm going to go with area damage and area force versus the increased power cell capacity because of what I'm using this for. I'm using it to take down or weaken large groups of enemies and to stun. Force is going to increase its stun and area damage obviously is going to affect more enemies versus being able to shoot more. It's not really as beneficial, especially when I can just keep on getting power cells next to or whenever I'm next to any ammo crates. For munitions training, you're going top, bottom, bottom. Reason being, rank 4 is either weapon damage or power damage with an increased power cell. We're not relying on our powers so much as our weapons because of turbo charge, so we're going to go weapon damage. Next, we can either go with a melee route, or we can go with reload speed, clip size, and spare ammo. I mean, this one should be pretty self-explanatory, definitely go weapon efficiency. Next one, this is a horse apiece. You can either go with the defense debuff per shot, 
or you can go with precision to increase your accuracy, stability, and then your weak point bonus. To me, this is a little unclear. It depends on what this truly means, whether it's damage from all sources, including your teammates, and it also doesn't um, specify how long this lasts, if it's indefinite. To me, it's just a little too vague and honestly not that much noticeable. Depends though. Again, you might actually want to pick it up. Maybe I'm wrong. Try it out. Who knows? But overall, I'm going to go with increased weapon stability and accuracy to help with that. And the main part, 20% weak point bonus. That is major. As long as you can aim well, you're going to do 20% more damage. That's really, really strong. Especially seeing as how this one, you're going to get a max of 24% damage increase. So for Aerial Assault, like I said, it's Glass Cannon, we're only going up to rank 4 in this. Some might even go up just to rank 3. You can do that. You can drop 4 and then put more points in this. You could go into increased stun duration. You could do damage versus armor, but I would do stun duration. Personally though, I don't think the stun duration is worth it, worth more than increasing your shields. And you can either do shields or hover duration, and you obviously want to do shields. So, weapon choices. Obviously, you're going to want to use an assault rifle. Personal preference, obviously Revenant, in my opinion, is the strongest one. Substitutes, you could run a Falcon. Um, I know the Valkyrie is decent, but you want an automatic, purely because you're going to get the most use out of an automatic, or fully automatic, sorry, assault rifle, thanks to turbocharge. Um, silver options, uh... There's really not many. Like you could try the Zulkin, but overall, there's not many good options. That made Avenger honestly might be your best option, as far as bronze versus silvers. Um, sidearms, you can use a second weapon. Depends on how high ranked it is. Like for example, I can run a Scorpion and the Revenant, and I'm still gonna be at 100% recharge rate, and I still got some room as well to work with. But that's because I've spent my money and I've played this game long enough that I have. Both of them rank 10. Not everyone's going to have that. So, you could probably just run a Revenant and might get you power recharge of like a 90%. You'll still be fine. As long as there's a 10% variance for me, usually that's all I'm really worried about. For equipment, currently, best in slots, Juggernaut Shield. If you missed week one, didn't grab it, sorry for your loss. Um, you don't really need Adaptive War Amp, which is this week's. So, Juggernaut Shield and nothing currently. But, that's it for the build. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment. Otherwise, you can always check out the gameplay footage I just put up. If you enjoyed, leave a like, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.